Hey guys, hope you're all well. I am Izzy and you might know that already if you've watched my first two YouTube videos, but if not then welcome to my channel and go watch them. <laughs> no, just kidding. If you're wondering why I have a glass of champagne <laughs> in the background, then my mum brought it me up because her and my dad are watching Derby vs Leicester and it's a bit tense, so champagne apparently was necessary. I don't know. Today I am here to do an empties video, so basically, I haven't done one of those before, I haven't really done money YouTube videos before, but basically that entails me showing you a few products that I have completely run out of and I'll let you know what I thought of them, whether I thought they were good or bad or, well that's about it really, or if I'm going to repurchase them or if I have repurchased them, but I've been trying to save them up for a while with the intention to do this video, so I think that's it for the intro. I'm just going to get straight into it now. And don't forget to like this video if you did like it, leave a comment, I always love seeing them and make sure that you subscribe for more fun content coming your way. Right, so I have kind of got some sort of system going on because I'm a bit OCD and I like systems. So I'm gonna start with skincare and hair care, then move on to like makeup products as I go. First up is the Daily Primer and Cleansing Serum from Witch Skincare. Um, I actually got this one gifted to me at a bloggers event called the East Midlands Blogger Meetup, which was amazing last August. I did have a blog post on it, so I'll leave it listed below. Um, but it was a really amazing meetup with so many bloggers from the East Midlands that I'd never met before. It was kind of my first big blogger event, so I was a bit nervous. But um, it was amazing. And Emmy, Leanne, and there's two Kirsties um, all organized it and they did a fab job. And we had some cute little goodie bags at the end, which is amazing as well. And this is one of the things in it. And I've since gone out and repurchased this. So this is kind of my first step in my skincare prep before I put a foundation on. So sometimes in the morning I won't want something as heavy as a moisturiser and this is what I'll use to pop all over my face and it's just a nice way of smoothing out my skin without leaving something too thick. So then if I go and put say a standard makeup primer on top and my foundation it's still going to sit nicely on the skin. I also like to use this at night time before I go to bed, again just as a, an alternative to moisturiser and absolutely love it and I feel like it just leaves my skin so smooth, it's all natural ingredients so it's brilliant for your skin. It smells really nice and just fresh and clean, and I absolutely love it. I think it's about four pounds, five pounds. Um, but yeah, like I said, I've since been out and bought a new one of these, and I love them. One done. Okay, next thing, skincare, is the Kiehl's Clearly Corrective Dark Spot Solution. Oh, this stuff is so nice. But it's like 36 pounds, so it's really expensive. I've literally got a couple drops left in this because I'm still trying to decide whether I want to buy a new one or not. What it's meant to do, it says clinically demonstrated to rapidly correct dark spots and discoloration for visible correction and clarity. One of the key ingredients for trying to get rid of discoloration and hyperpigmentation in skin is uh, vitamin C or activated vitamin C. And this has got that in it. Also smells beautiful, obviously Kiehl's again, all organic, all natural ingredients. Um, so it's nice skincare to use. But £36, well, that's pretty pricey if you're not 100% sure if it is doing the job. So, I don't know. I feel like my dark spots have decreased over the last six months of using this, but would they have just done that anyway naturally over time? I feel like it has helped, but I don't know how much, like I said. So if you guys have any recommendations for dark spot solutions slash solutions for hyperpigmentation, please um, let me know in the comments below because I would love to try them. Next up is the Garnier Micellar Cleansing Water. This is the normal one, I've had the green one before which I think is maybe for combination skin. So it's non-scented which I really like, um, obviously it's not got alcohol in which is why I switched it in the first place because I was trying to cut all alcohol and drying products out of my system or out of my skincare routine and I do feel like it effectively gets off my makeup. I just feel like something else might do it better. I do really want to try the Bioderma Micellar Water because I have yet to try that. And obviously, they kind of are the kings of the micellar market. I mean, I have gone through quite a few bottles of this, but like I said, it does the job and I always get it on offer when it's in boots, so it's about three pounds for the big one. And this one was like a pound when I got it for a holiday. So next up is the Double Wear Stay In Place Makeup by Estee Lauder. Um, classic foundation product loved by tons of people. I'm in the shade 2N1 Desert Beige. I find the coverage is great for this. When I have previously had really bad skin, I'm talking really bad, this is amazing for covering it up. So if you are looking for a high coverage foundation or a buildable medium to high coverage foundation that still feels lightweight on the skin, I think this is fab. But ever since I started taking Roaccutane, 
which was, I believe, November last year, just after I got back from Florida. As my skin got drier, I don't feel like this stayed on as nicely throughout the day. Like I just felt like it didn't look as flawless as it did to start off with. I needed something with more moisture in it. But I do still love this and it is fab for high coverage. And I think when I come off more Accutane and head away from the winter drying months, I probably will jump back to this again. So next up is the Urban Decay Naked Skin Concealer. I believe it is light warm, I have it in. And I've repurchased it about three times, so I do absolutely love this one. I really wanna try the Tarte Shape Tip Concealer. <laughs> I just see everyone raving about it. It describes itself as weightless complete coverage concealer, and I completely agree with that. I never find it looks cakey. Well, I regularly forget to set my face slash under eye area. It always holds up, it always looks fab. And I just hate, I always get dark under here and it completely eliminates that problem. So yeah, I have no complete. A little hair care one. Provoke Professional Hair Care Touch of Silver Brightening Shampoo. This describes itself as a toning violet pigment. Neutralizes brassiness and brightens colors in just one wash. Well, that is just one big fat lie. It just doesn't work. It's crap. When I left for Florida last year in October, I brought this with me because I thought, use it every other wash, something like that, just to keep my hair looking this really nice purpley, lilac-y colour that I had going on. I really liked the colour, it slowly washed out, and then I was kind of left with a bit of a weird yellowy undertone. By the way, this did nothing. And then I thought, maybe it's just how chlorinated the pool was, like, this just couldn't combat that. So I got back home, got my hair back to like a nice, kind of this sort of neutrally ashy colour use this, the next wash it had gone straight back to her yellow straw blonde again. I'm also pretty sure a friend of mine called Gabby used this and she didn't think it worked either, so I don't think I'm being crazy. But yeah, by Provoke, good reading. So next up we have eye products. I have a couple of mascaras for you. Uh, this one is the Chanel Inimitable Intense Mascara. Um, I had this back in the day I think I got like a free sample of it. I really loved it so much that I put it on my Christmas list. So at about age 15, I had this mascara. I know a bit ridiculous, but I really, really liked it. And I felt like it made my lashes look really cool. And I remember some of the girls at school being like, oh, your lashes are so long, are they real? And I was like, yeah, they're real. It was just a very exciting time for a little 15 year old me. I don't know. The one is completely like synthetic, as you can see, um, and really, really fine, which I love because I feel like it separates my lashes. But this one just, just didn't do the trick for me. It does separate your lashes really nicely. Um, I just don't feel like it does much else. Like I felt like I was really having to scrape in it, in like inside the thingamajig, to um, coat my lashes with actual mascara. And that was when I hadn't even had it for that long. Maybe I had a bad one, I don't know. But I still feel like it did an awful lot. It did come in handy when I put a clumpy mascara on and I needed to separate my lashes, however. Then the wand was quite useful. But the mascara itself, so the next mascara is Benefit They're Real. I did really like this mascara. I've worn this on holiday before and accidentally been thrown into a pool. Well, no, not accidentally. I was just unaware it was gonna happen. And I had this on and it didn't come off. So I don't know how that's really possible, but maybe it's because I didn't touch my eyes. Who knows? But either way, it didn't come off. So I was quite impressed by that. Again, it's one of those um, really spiky synthetic ones, which I love. And because the fibres are that little bit thicker than the Chanel ones, I find that it actually provides volume, not just separation. So I do actually quite like this one. Maybe I'll buy it again. Next up on the list is the Collection Fast Stroke Eyeliner. I've been through a million of these. Um, not because they're incredible, I do think they're really, really good and they're about £2.50. And I just feel like you can't go wrong with something like that. So the tip's pretty fine, as you can see. Um, simple, you just dip the pot in, put it on your eyes. I, I do really like these. Again, they're about £2.50, so I really can't complain on the price. It's just at the moment I am so loving my Kat Von D tattoo liner in Trooper. It's just so easy. Like, I don't need to worry about leaving the pot on the side and knocking it over. It's just a pen. I just draw it on and that's done. But for a cheaper alternative, it's bad boy. It's pretty great. And also, when you're doing costume makeup on other people or fancy dress makeup kind of thing, uh, this is really handy because well, it's really nice to hold and it's really precise so you can get really close and get some fine details in there and you're not spending an absolute fortune on a really expensive, uh, what's this called? Liner, why are you doing it? 
Right, so next up are two eyeshadows from Makeup Geek. They're both matte. Uh, one is called Vanilla Bean, and it's just a kind of really skin toned, well for me anyway, nude all over colour. Really useful for a natural brow bone highlight or to blend out shades that are a little bit too dark. It kind of cancels them out, so it's really useful. So, and the next one is Beaches and Cream. Uh, I have another one quite similar to this called Peach Smoothie, which is slightly more warm. This one is really useful for if you're doing a warm eye look, kind of like I've got on going on today. If you pop this down into the crease area before using those darker shades, it works as a transition color. So when you go to blend out those dark shades, uh, it's just way more seamless and easy to blend. So I love both of these. I think I definitely will be repurchasing both of them. But Beaches and Cream, I'm probably gonna wait for for a bit because I want to use up more of my peach smoothie, which I haven't used as much. All Makeup Geek products are cruelty free and they're working the way to be completely vegan as well, so they're an amazing company. And about five pounds on Beauty Bay, so. And the final product I have for you is the Ready Set Brow Gel from Benefit. This stuff is so good, but it does leave your brows a bit kind of crusty. Does that make sense? If you look at the wand, it is so, so thin and detailed that it really coats every single individual brow hair. However, it does leave them feeling very stiff and weird feeling, I can't describe it. If you've got kind of those unruly brow hairs that you really need to set in place, this is the one for you. But um, just remember that they will not feel natural to the touch. I think that's everything I wanted to say. Um, I really hope you enjoyed this video and didn't find it too boring. If you saw a product that you have an alternative for, please leave a comment below and let me know because I would love to try it. And I'm just gonna have a glass of champagne now, so don't mind me. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Like this video if you liked it. Leave a comment below. I can't think of anything else to say. I think that's everything. So um, yeah, I'll see you next time. Bye. Oh. Uh, <laughs> if you've watched my first heat, I'm just piecing out. I don't know what I'm doing. Never will be good enough. Anyway, shaving, saving. Oh my god, my brain. Ah. Today I'm here to talk to you. I don't know what I'm talking about. I don't. What's that? <laughs> I still want to do it again. That's what I say to you, Garnier. I forgot your name. That's how important you are to me. No. No.